So let's get into learning all about how to use the Fitbit Inspire 3. We're gonna talk about clock faces, how to set up notifications, how to set goals, do exercises, and get you to do more with your Fitbit Inspire up next. Hey everyone, my name is Jeff and I've done all sorts of Fitbit tutorial videos on this channel and today I'm teaching you all about how to use the Fitbit Inspire 3. Now, there's all sorts of different topics I'm talking about so you can jump to the timestamps down in the video description uh, if you just want to learn about certain things to do with your Inspire 3. But in the meantime, let's get started talking about all the cool things. And just a quick note, if you haven't set up your Inspire 3 yet, be sure to check out the setup and unboxing video I've done on the Inspire 3. That'll be linked down in the video description as well as at the end of this video. So let's start off with how to wake up your Inspire 3. Now there's two ways you can do this. Uh, right now, believe it or not, it's asleep. The screen is slightly dimmer than when it's awake. If I double tap this, you'll notice the screen got just a little bit brighter and that's one way to wake it up. The other way you can put it to sleep, press these two side buttons. That's actually putting it to sleep and then pressing them again real quick is going to uh, wake it up. So you're probably going to want a cool design on your Inspire 3 and that's going to be your clock face. Uh, you can change these clock faces, and this one in particular is just one style. Uh, if you like it, great. You can actually change the color scheme, um, or you can have a completely different design. Now, in order to do this, you'll need to go to your Fitbit app, so let's go do that. So with the Fitbit app pulled up uh, to change that clock face, I'm gonna click on my, or tap on my profile picture that's in the upper left. This brings me to my account, and then I wanna tap on Inspire 3. Now under Inspire 3, you've got all sorts of different information, but we wanna tap on the gallery. And under gallery, this is going to bring up uh, different tabs at the top of my screen. So we've got Inspire 3, and I can see all the information about what's currently on the Inspire 3. The next tab over is Clocks. Clocks shows me all the different clock faces that I have available that I could install. So if I find one that I like, say this big time, I'm gonna tap on that, and then this gives me information about that clock face. I can tap Install. And while it's installing, we'll notice on the Inspire 3, we get a little uh, status bar showing that the installation is working through. So a lot of these will only take a couple of seconds. We get a little message saying update complete. And from this point, that big time is now installed. If I go back and I click on the Inspire 3 tab up top, I can tap on my active clock and not all these, but some of these clock faces will give you different options here, showing you different information it's gonna display or giving you different color options for the text that's gonna be on your screen. So let's talk about the uh, different symbols that we have on our clock face. If I double tap this to wake it up, come on Inspire 3, there we go. Uh, you'll notice at the bottom I've got a shoe. So that's gonna stand for how many steps I have taken today. So far, 36, 36, not too bad. If I tap the screen again, 64 is my current heart rate. Uh, 65, I think it's picking it up off my finger there. Uh, this little fire symbol is how many calories that I have burned for the day, 1,069. Uh, this tick mark is going to be the distance that I have gone, walked, run, 1.71 miles and then if I tap the screen again I get these arrows uh, pointing up with the number three so that is going to be active zone minutes now if you're not quite sure how active zone minutes works uh, here's a quick breakdown so uh, Fitbit is encouraging you to stay active throughout the day and uh, you get one active zone minute uh, for any fat burn that you are doing during the day. Now, if you are really working hard exercising and you're in cardio, or if you're in a peak heart rate zone, you actually get two active zone minutes for every minute that you're doing cardio or in that uh, peak zone. And Fitbit by default sets a goal of 150 active zone minutes per week that it wants you to do or 22 active zone minutes per day. Now you can change those goals. You can also change your goals for steps, calories, all that, and I'll show you how to do that. 
So to change your goals, uh, you can go into your Fitbit app, tap the upper left profile icon, and under your account, go to this activity and wellness. Under there, you'll see daily activity, and if I tap on that, I can see steps, distance, calories, my active zone minutes for the day. Here's my weekly active zone minutes. These are all your goals. So if I tap on that, right now it's set to 150. I can change that goal to whatever I want. And real quick, a shout out to two recent viewers on Tinker Ford. The first one is Siva Kumar M and Weinard Benson. They are latest viewers on this channel to find Tinker hidden in my video. So every video on this channel, I hide Tinker. He looks just like this guy on my shirt, this little robot. He briefly pops up somewhere during the video. If you are the first person to spot Tinker popping up somewhere in this video, take note of the timestamp. That's the amount of time into this video that you spotted him popping up and let me know that down in the comments section below. And if you're the first person, I will give you a shout out in one of my future videos as well as put your name on our Tinker Ford Hall of Fame page. So be the first person to spot Tinker and let me know the timestamp down in the comments section below. So next I wanna talk about Fitbit today. And if you swipe up on your Inspire 3, you are gonna see all your stats from today. The amount of battery you have left, currently 53%. The day Wednesday, the date September 21st. And then a lot of the information that was on that clock face, the amount of steps I've gotten, distance I've gone, active zone minutes for the day, my calories burned, and then I start seeing information like my hourly activity. So Fitbit wants you to take at least 250 steps per hour, and if you meet that, then you get uh, credit for that. So I've gotten six hourly activities. You'll see for the day I'm at 36, 36 steps. So I'm, I'm doing really well as far as hourly activity. Uh, you can also see here heart rate, so my average heart rate was 76, 77. My resting heart rate was 64 beats per minute. And this will update if I were to put the tracker back on my wrist. Uh, I can also see the sleep that I got last night. Now you're not gonna get any sleep information if you haven't worn this to bed on your wrist. Um, so if you are gonna charge this, uh, try not to charge it at night if you want it to track your sleep data. And of course you can get more specific information on your sleep in the Fitbit app. Oh, and I took too long talking so it went to sleep, but here we come back. Just underneath sleep, it gives you a sleep score. So mine was 74, which is just fair. Not the greatest uh, night of sleep last night. Um, it'll also take an SpO2 reading, that is your blood oxygen level reading. Uh, and you do have to, again, wear the fitness tracker overnight. It won't take an on the fly reading. Mine came up at 96%. Uh, and it does take a little bit of time, even after you wake up in the morning, to actually reflect your blood oxygen level. Now, in addition to that exercise, I've gotten exercise here two out of the four days in a week that I set my goal to exercise. Now, you can also change that goal in your Fitbit uh, app on your phone or device by going to your profile icon, scrolling down to settings, and choosing your daily activity under exercise. You can choose if you want to do seven days of exercise, one day of exercise a week to customize that. Now that's gonna be everything under the Fitbit today. So let's talk about navigating on your uh, Inspire 3. So if you swipe to the left, or you can swipe to the right, uh, that takes you into your different menu options. Swiping to the left takes you to your notifications. And if I swipe up, I can see text messages, I can see emails, uh, I can see all sorts of stuff. Uh, here is a, a preview of one of the emails I've gotten. If I actually tap the email, it opens it up. Now, not the greatest reading this stuff on your Inspire 3, but you get a snapshot of what you might be looking for. And if you scroll to the bottom, it gives you options where you can delete it right from your Inspire 3. You can open it on your device, or you can choose to clear it from your notifications. If I swipe back to the left, that takes me back a menu. I can swipe again, I'm back to notifications. Now you can set up notifications on your phone or device uh, so you can choose what notifications you wanna get. To set up and uh, customize notifications from your Fitbit home screen or dashboard, tap your profile icon, go to your Inspire 3, 
And then under Inspire 3, if we look down halfway here under General, we'll see Notifications. I can tap on that and I can turn on or off notifications from calls, text messages, calendar events, emails, or even app notifications. And what else is cool is you can go to Quick Replies and under Quick Replies for say your text messages, uh, you can actually customize quick little responses to say. So as an example, if I tap on messages, uh, what would pop up on my screen would be yes, no, sounds good, can't talk now. Uh, otherwise I can tap on this and I can make my own custom message to reply to people, talk to you in five minutes or something like that to just quickly respond to messages. Let's say I'm maybe working out or something and I don't wanna to talk to them. I can just quickly tap that quick reply. So moving past notifications, if I swipe to the left, this takes me to how to start an exercise. If I wanna start an exercise, I would go here and then right now it's set to run. If I swipe up, I can go through the different options I have for exercises, walking, biking, swimming, uh, or just a general workout. So if it's something uh, that's kind of custom of a workout, you can just have it track the workout. Uh, you can also do treadmill, want more, you can edit these exercise shortcuts. So let's say you typically like to go for a, a walk but by default here it's set up as run, you can actually change the order of these exercises in your app. To reorder exercises in your app, tap on the icon in the upper left for your profile, tap on Inspire 3, and then under here at the bottom you'll see Exercise Shortcuts. If I go ahead and tap on that, I have all the different exercise shortcuts available, and if I wanted to do walk instead of run popping up uh, at first, I can just hold down on these lines off to the left and reorder these workouts in any order I want. Once I'm done, I can just go back and then the next time you sync with your device, it'll update that. And if this video is helping you out, if you're learning something, take a quick second, smash that like button. It helps out this video and I greatly appreciate it. Now to actually start an exercise, you're going to just go ahead and tap on whatever exercise you've chosen, and then it's gonna try and connect to the GPS uh, on your phone or device that's synced to your Inspire 3. There's no built-in GPS on the Inspire 3, so if you go out for a walk or run, it might count your steps, but it won't actually track your location if you don't have your phone, because it uses your phone's GPS. So you can go ahead and hit start, and that would start the exercise. And it even says GPS connected. It'll tell me my pace and it's gonna be timing. I can swipe up to pause the workout. Uh, if I were to pause it, from this point, I have a choice to resume, which is the play button. Uh, so if you're gonna take a break from your workout or go ahead and finish. If I hit the finish, it gives me a status readout of all of this information from that workout, my time, distance, pace, active zone minutes, heart rate, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and then I can click done. Now something very important, if you want it to actually log all of this information from that workout, you need to make sure that you sync up with your device, your phone or whatever you've got this Inspire 3 linked to, to save that workout. Otherwise, if you don't sync up with your phone or device, uh, it's only gonna have it saved on the Inspire 3, and if something happens where you need to reset it or something, that exercise isn't saved. To sync with your device, you simply go into the Fitbit app, and then on the dashboard here, take your finger and swipe down, and you'll notice here, release to refresh. That is now syncing my Inspire 3 to my phone, and it's saving all that information, such as the last workout that I just did. So after exercises, if I swipe to the left, I get relax, and this is a two minute breathing session. And you can just tap on it, find a uh, little calm with a guided breathing exercise. You can click okay, and I'll hit start, and then you'll notice here that it's gonna tell me to take slow, deep breaths, be still, and it walks me through a two minute breathing exercise uh, following the circle. So we'll get a circle here and it's gonna tell me to inhale and exhale and continue to do this for a two minute session to just kind of help relax me. So if we keep swiping to the left, 
after relax. We have alarms. Very cool to set alarms on your device. You simply would just go to add and then let's say I was going to set an alarm for 630. I can choose the 6. I can go down to 30. And then AM or PM, let's do AM. So now I've got an alarm set for 6.30. Now you can actually set up to eight alarms. Uh, and with this alarm, if I scroll down, I can turn it on or off. Uh, I can choose when to have it repeat. So if I just want it one time, or if I wanted it every day, or just a certain day of the week, I can choose to do that. Uh, in addition to that, you can turn on Smart Wake on or off. So Smart Wake is gently going to start vibrating the uh, Inspire 3 up to a half hour before you're supposed to wake up at 6.30 to gently wake you up versus just a harsh vibration at the time you're supposed to get up. Now, if we were going to set another alarm, uh, I would just swipe back. So I swipe to the right to go back to the main alarm screen. And if I, I can see here, I've got that 6.30 a.m. alarm set. If I scroll up a little bit, I now have the opportunity to set a new alarm. And then you would just go through the same process. And let's say this one was going to be for 9 a.m. Um, as I go and set uh, my 9 a.m. alarm, it now says alarm set. And I will see here, and again, I get the options whether I want to repeat. You can also just turn the alarm on or off right here uh, from that particular screen. Now, if I swipe to the right to go back, I'll see I've got my 6.30 a.m. alarm and I've got my 9 a.m. alarm set. If I want to delete one of these alarms, I can just tap on it and then scroll to the bottom here, and that'll give me the option to remove it. So let's go ahead and remove that alarm. Now I've just got that 9 a.m. alarm set. So if I swipe to the left from alarms, that brings me to timers, and I've got options here to either do a countdown or do a stopwatch. Now if I do a countdown, I can tap on that. And just for an example here, I'm gonna say zero minutes, and let's do a two second countdown. So this brings me to the start, and I can go ahead and hit start. It's gonna count down. And then from this point, the uh, Inspire 3 is vibrating, telling me it's done. So I'm going to swipe up and dismiss that. Uh, and then we've finished that countdown. I can swipe to the right to go back. Uh, we're going to swipe right again to go back to say stopwatch. Stopwatch ready. And then I can just go ahead and start timing. I can pause it at any point and then resume. If I am done, I can just go to reset and that's gonna reset my, uh, my stopwatch. And after your timers, if you swipe to the left again, this takes you back to your main screen and that is all the different navigation options for the Inspire 3. So let's talk about charging your Inspire 3. Should have come with an included uh, charger port. So one end is USB. You'll need to provide your own USB plug. And then there are two metal contacts uh, on this charging port. Uh, and then you'll notice that there's a clip on either side. That's going to clip to the back of your Inspire 3. Now, before we do that, let's just take a look at the back. You'll see these metal contact, the four dots. Those need to match up with the two dots on your charger. And you'll notice there's a little indent for the clip and a little indent for the clip. We're going to just turn this sideways, take our uh, charger, the metal uh, prongs are going to match up to those dots, and we are just going to fasten that on. And then from this point, we're ready to charge by plugging in. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the Inspire 3. You'll notice it gives you a status on the screen saying it's charging. It'll tell you the percent that it's at. So from my experience charging the Inspire 3, it's going to take, if you run the battery down to zero, roughly about an hour to fully charge it. And then Fitbit says you're gonna get up to uh, seven to 10 days of battery life out of uh, using the Inspire 3. Now there's some settings on here like the always on setting uh, that are gonna definitely deplete the battery life faster than that. But that is how you charge your Inspire 3. So switching out the bands on the Inspire 3, let's say you've got a uh, larger or smaller band that you want to switch out or maybe you chose to buy a custom band uh, from Fitbit or another website uh, you can switch or change the bands by flipping it over and you'll see these little pins that are on the back 
you just press your finger onto that pin and there's not much room for somebody like me with kind of fatter fingers but once you get that unclipped you'll just pull the band out and then you can switch it out with your new band go ahead and bring it in we're going to make sure the pin seeds into this end i'll actually show you a close-up of the uh, the end piece let's insert our new band that we're going to put in you got to make sure it gets all the way in there and then use your finger to push down that pin to insert it in now make sure after you have inserted your bands you tug on them that they are nice and snug and tight so that this doesn't pop off on you uh, while you're in the middle of a workout so if you pop both bands off you can actually purchase a clip for this Inspire 3 so you don't have to wear it on your wrist you can actually pop this into the clip clip it to your shirt clip it to your waist and then do your workout that way uh, that is something available on Fitbit's website. So real quick, let's talk about Auto Wake. Uh, if you swipe down from the top of the screen, very bright, but it says Auto Wake and it's currently turned on, you can just tap it to turn it off. Uh, if you have it turned off, when we go back to the main screen, uh, if I tap it again, so the dimmer screen is when the Inspire 3 kind of goes to sleep. Now I've got it turned on always on, which is why you're still seeing a display. But with the, uh, the auto wake turned on, essentially when you turn your wrist, that's going to light it up and uh, essentially allow you to use it. With the auto wake turned off, you'll notice that it was a dimmer screen and I didn't have the options to do anything. Let's turn the auto wake back on and let's go ahead and put it to sleep. Now, if you're wearing this on your wrist and you turn to look at it, you'll notice the screen lights up and uh, from this point I can do things on my Inspire 3. So your choice whether you want the uh, auto wake on or off. Swiping down from the top of the screen also allows you to turn on do not disturb mode and then you can also turn on or off sleep mode and a big question is what's the difference? So do not disturb mode is going to turn off if I turn on do not disturb mode it is going to turn off causing me to get any notifications, any uh, like goal celebrations, and any reminders to move. Those are all going to get turned off when it's in do not disturb mode. Sleep mode essentially is doing the same thing, uh, except it's also going to keep your screen dimmed because, you know, a lot of times you're sleeping at night, you don't want to be disturbed by that bright screen. So that's basically the big difference between sleep mode and do not disturb mode. Um, you can only have sleep mode on or do not disturb mode on. You can't actually have both of them on at the same time. So another convenient feature is the find my phone option. You swipe down from the top of the screen, you go past these different modes. Here's find my phone. If I tap that, it's going to push the button there. It's going to find my phone, ring a tone and very convenient to find your phone. So also scrolling a little bit more, uh, we were talking about how you can wear the Inspire 3 on your wrist. If you are going to get a clip for it, this is where you would change that setting to clip onto your body instead. And it tells you here things like heart rate, sleep score, and other features won't be available. You would just tap yes to do that. So if you're going to take this swimming with you, uh, you're going to want to put the water lock on. And if you swipe down, you keep swiping until you see water lock. And there's water lock. To turn it on, you're going to firmly double tap. So you really have to, um, I know for me sometimes this takes several times. There we go. Uh, firmly pressing on it there to tap it. And then you'll see water lock has been engaged. And so even like using my fingers, uh, I'm not gonna be able to do anything on the menus until I double tap it firmly again to take off that water lock. So let's see if we can unlock it here. I really gotta firmly, there we go. Okay, and now the water lock is turned off. Great feature if you're going swimming. So I'm gonna jump through the different settings and you get to settings on your Inspire 3 by just swiping down from the top of the screen and just keep swiping until you see settings. If we tap on that, uh, we start off with display settings. So I can tap on that, change my brightness. 
Uh, I can turn that auto wake on or off. I can change the screen time on, so long, medium, or short. Uh, and then there's the always on display option. If I want to turn that on or off, always on display is going to always have some sort of a display screen even when the thing times out. And that is where you'll see. So if I were to essentially put the, put the device to sleep, I've still got a dimmed screen showing me stats information. If I turn that always on off, this would just be blank. But again, having this on also affects your battery life. So under those display settings, we've got quiet modes. Uh, you can turn on that do not disturb from here as well. You can turn on sleep mode from here as well. Uh, there's also an exercise focus you can turn on so that you don't get notifications and stuff while you're exercising. Uh, underneath that, you can turn on or off whether you want it to monitor your heart rate, whether you want to be notified when you hit those active zone minutes, uh, or if you want to turn on your button lock, which is essentially going to shut down the button so you're not accidentally bumping them, uh, turning on your device. You can also change your vibrations. So you've got strong or you've got normal. I personally like the strong because it definitely uh, notifies me. And then you can go to your device info. If we click on device info, this is where we can see our system information. Uh, we can also see regulatory information. Or if you want to clear your user data, this is where you're going to do it. So if you ever get to the point where you want to reset your Inspire 3, maybe you're going to sell it, uh, you would go to this setting here. Now, anytime we swipe to the right, this takes us back. So this is under that settings. That was device info. At the very bottom of this menu, this is where you go to restart your device. So if I tap this, it's going to ask me here if I want to really restart my device. And from here, I could hit restart. If you're ever wondering how to update your Inspire uh, 3, what you would need to do if they ever release an update is you'll actually get a prompt right here at the top and it'll say uh, update available for your device. And then you can just tap on that, follow the prompts to update it. That's essentially all you need to do to update your Inspire 3 to the latest update. So let's take a quick look at the Fitbit dashboard um, just to show you what you can get out of using the app. At the top, it's going to show you all your latest stats. And if this doesn't match what's on your Fitbit, you're probably going to want to make sure it's synced up. And you can do that by just long uh, kind of swiping down. and It'll say release to refresh. That's going to sync up your uh, Fitbit Inspire and then it will uh, show you your latest info and it says sync complete. So things you can do from the dashboard, you can track your mindfulness. Um, so there are mindful sessions that you can do and some of them are only available with premium. You'll know that because they'll say premium. There's going to be some that are not premium, that they are shorter. They want you to try them out. Uh, so different mindfulness uh, activities that you can do in that area. Um, there's a stress management area, and there's sensors in the Inspire 3 that are tracking your stress. It's actually going to show you a chart, and you're going to have to wear the Inspire 3 for several days before it's going to actually start showing you this information. And then it gives you a score. So the score is a breakdown of responsiveness, uh, exertion balance, and sleep patterns. And I'm scoring an 87. Uh, and then you can also add your own stuff. So how are you feeling? And then it does give you, uh, with premium, you get some quick stress resets. So here's a mindful eating. And it shows me here my stress score per day. So apparently today I'm really stressed. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel really stressed, uh, but... Fitbit's saying otherwise. Um, so you can kind of see where you're at with the stress management. Uh, if we jump back, you can also see your sleep information. Last night, I did not get a good night of sleep. I only got five hours, 16 minutes, uh, and it breaks it down for you here into your different sleep patterns. If you tap on the sleep, it goes and breaks down, uh, you know, more information about your sleep uh, as far as, let's see here, so last night, 5 uh, hours, 16 minutes, if I tap on that, gives me a sleep score of 74, shows me my time of sleep, my time in deep and REM, and then restoration. 
I can also see previous days. I can go back uh, several weeks if I want. And then uh, I believe with premium, it also gives you more uh, kind of helpful tips and information to help you with your sleep patterns. So as we scroll down a little bit more, we can also view health metrics. This is pretty cool. Uh, health metrics, let's jump into that. So you can see health metrics for today or trends. Shows me everything from my breathing rate, heart rate variability, skin temperature, oxygen saturation, and then resting heart rate. Uh, can I tap on any of these? Yeah, so like breathing rate here, it'll show me uh, breaths per minute. I can actually go back in the history. I can see stuff, heart rate variability, skin temperature. Now this is gonna show you varying degrees of your skin temperature. It's not the same as like temperature being taken from a thermometer, um, but it says your graph shows variations in your nightly skin temperature over the past week as measured by your Fitbit device while you're asleep. So I can see here, this one was negative uh, 2.3, 1.9. Um, so you can read more about that in the about section talking about um, how it's taking your skin temperature, how do they calculate it, and why it matters. Uh, blood saturation, so I can see 97, 96, 97, 96 are all my percentages. Um, so it's taking that blood oxygen saturation by wearing the Inspire 3 overnight. Uh, it's cool because it gives you all of this information, why it matters, um, under the about, and then you can see your history from all the previous readings that it's done. So if I jump back uh, to the main screen, underneath health metrics is this readiness score. Now the readiness score, this is something that only comes with premium, again indicated by premium. Uh, I've got a, a 44. I guess I'm not sure if that's good or not. Usually I'm noticing here the higher the score the better. My guess is 44 is probably not that good. It says you've been more active lately and your readiness score is good. Plan for some moderate exercise, but don't overdo it. And then this shows my active zone minutes uh, over the last uh, period of time. I can see activity, recent sleep, heart rate variability, and it looks like I can tap on those and get more specifics on all of that. So activity, 23 zone minutes, 79 zone minutes, daily average, yesterday, um, intense activity, light activity, why it matters. So it really breaks down a lot of the information. It says here, view all active zone minute trends. And it's going to go into more here. How much physical activity do you need? Make every minute count. Personalize your goal. Uh, so, you know, this is the 150 for the week. You can increase that. You can decrease that to whatever you want. I'm just going to click uh, looks good. There's a whole active zone minutes section. And this is going to break down those active zone minutes from when I've been doing fat burn, cardio, uh, peak heart rate shows my activities here. Moderate activity, it's showing the times that those are taking place. And then gives me all sorts of information here on active zone minutes, why it matters, um, all that information. So something about the daily readiness score, uh, it says you're still tuning your score. Over the first 14 days, Fitbit tunes your readiness score by learning how your body responds to exercise and recovery. I've still got five days left, so it's studying me, which is kind of creepy, actually, I think, um, but kind of cool at the same time. Uh, it's going to spit out a whole bunch of information uh, about my trends and probably give me some recommendations. In fact, there's recommendation here. Uh, since your readiness is good, aim for some moderately intense activity to get your heart pumping. So we've got here a 30-minute cardio HIIT workout. Uh, there are some other workouts here that I could do. And again, these show premium on them. I think all of these are premium. This whole daily readiness section is something that's only available with premium. Now, when I got the Inspire 3, it did come with a... Uh, free trial of Fitbit Premium. So I'll have to see if I can go through some of this and uh, see how I like it. Jumping back from the readiness score, uh, we've also got our exercise area and this is gonna report any run or walking or any exercises that you track. And I'm shooting for four days of exercise a week. Right now I've done three out of the four days, so I'm doing pretty good there. 
and you can jump into that and see more details on any of those workouts that you've logged. Uh, it's recording my heart rate right now, uh, and uh, I've also got here three of nine hours of uh, 250 plus steps per hour. So it's tracking how active I am during the day. And click on this and see more information. And I can see here, so uh, yesterday I got nine out of nine hours, seven out of nine hours. Uh, and, and you can uh, just learn more about how active you are during the day. Underneath that, we've also got here uh, where you can track your weight. And we can actually go into this. Now I haven't actively been doing this, but you can go to the plus sign and I could log today's weight if I wanted to uh, and put that information in. Now it's not doing that automatically. It's something that you're gonna have to log manually. But if you wanna see your progress over the last month, several months, um, this is a, a way that you can do that by logging that in the app. And then you can also log your water. I am really bad at logging myself with intakes of water, but you can see here that you can add uh, quick ads for the day, a glass, a bottle, whatever you need, and that'll allow you to keep track of how much water you're getting during the day. You can also start logging your food. And there's more information here, uh, and there's even recipes. Now the recipes are something that's just available with premium, but you can see all of that information. Uh, and then if you are gonna log some sort of food, there's a barcode scanner, or you can go in and log food by manually uh, inputting it. Fitbit also has other tabs at the bottom of the app, Discover, where they've got uh, featured information, challenges and adventures, assessment reports. Some of this stuff is only available by premium, and you'll see that because it's got the little premium logo next to it. Uh, but just all sorts of stuff, clocks and apps gallery, workouts, mindfulness, uh, activities for you to do, nutrition, guided programs, and then here is more menu options of what you can do. Basically the same stuff that was up top. There's also a whole Fitbit community. So this is where you can connect with other, say Fitbit friends. You can click on friends and there's a little plus button to add them. Uh, or if you're already connected from a previous Fitbit device, you can see how your other friends are doing with their activities, with their steps. Uh, and then there's all sorts of information, very much like other social media where there's a, a constant populating uh, feed of all sorts of latest uh, articles, activities, things to keep you engaged and keep you healthy. And then the last uh, button here or tab is premium. And again, I've, I'm on the free trial with premium right now, but you can see these are the different things that you get by paying for premium. Uh, and you can find out more information on premium on Fitbit's website. So I'm interested to know what are your thoughts on the Fitbit Inspire 3? Did I answer your questions? Was this video helpful? Let me know down in the comments section below. Now I've done a whole bunch of other Fitbit tutorial videos and reviews on this channel. So if you were looking to see what the difference was between this and say the Charge 5 or the Lux, um, or even the brand new uh, Versa 4 and Sense 2 that are gonna be coming in the upcoming weeks. I'm gonna be doing more tutorial and review videos on those, so you're gonna definitely wanna check those out. So hit that subscribe button or that little notification bell to get notified when those videos come out. In the meantime, there'll be a playlist linked at the bottom of this video, as well as popping up here at the end where you can click over and check out some of the other great Fitbit tutorial videos I've done. I've also done a whole bunch of other videos on other cool smartwatches and tech reviews that you're not gonna wanna miss. My name is Jeff, and as always, I appreciate you watching here on Tinker Ford. Be sure to make every day awesome, and I will see you in the next video.